Welcome everyone to our final webinar in our lunch and learn series, focusing on hybrid delivery for adult literacy newcomers. My name is Jenica Henry and I work as a research coordinator at the Immigrant Education Society or TIES. And I'm accompanied by Marianne who presented last week's webinar. She will be watching our chat box. In today's session, our primary focus will be exploring how hybrid delivery fosters equitable access to literacy education. We will dive deeper into a specific component of our toolkit, namely the personal hybrid learning plan, which has been crafted to benefit literacy educators and their students. Please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A box to type any questions or comments you have throughout the session, and we will address them at the very end. Before we start, let's acknowledge and honor the land Ties operates on, situated on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy and the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta and the Northwest Métis Homeland Region 3. Our research is funded by IRCC through the Service Delivery Improvement Stream and is part of a three-year initiative known as Hybrid Education for Literacy Learners Optimization, or HELLO. Our aim is to establish and share best practices for sustainable implementation of hybrid delivery methods tailored specifically to adult newcomer literacy learners. Our project involves several members within our organization, and we have formed collaborative partnerships with researchers at the University of Michigan, and the University of British Columbia. Our, researcher, our research was conducted within the context of both TIES and the LINK program through the Edmonton Catholic School Division. Please take a moment to scan the QR code to access our toolkit, or you can access it on our website at this link. It will be located at the bottom of the webpage. Here is an overview of today's session. To start, we will be revisiting who are literacy learners in online spaces and dive into the implications of adopting hybrid delivery as an equity policy. Following that, we will explore the respective roles of teachers and organizations in the context of hybrid delivery. And finally, we will wrap up with an opportunity for the audience to ask any questions. Understanding the complexity of literacy learners' identities and backgrounds is important so that educators can support their education best. To revisit the profile literacy learners, they typically consist of individuals who have experienced interrupted education and have received approximately zero to eight years of formal, formal schooling. They exhibit cognitive gaps in various domains, including literacy, numeracy, comprehension of print and multimodal texts, general knowledge and familiarity with problem-based learning. They often lack familiarity with classroom routines and dynamics as well. The majority of these learners are women and often come from refugee backgrounds from regions in the Middle East, Africa, the Caribbean, and South America. As we transition beyond emergency remote teaching prompted by COVID-19, there's a strong case for embracing post-pandemic hybrid delivery. It can impact students' experiences, particularly benefiting vulnerable groups, such as caregivers, low-income individuals, those balancing work, students with disabilities, mental health challenges, medical needs, and seniors with mobility issues. It promotes equity by addressing these systemic barriers to in-person education, ensuring fairness and access for all. Hybrid delivery can enhance student attendance and retention rates by offering the flexibility to choose through interactive learning and real-world application 
all while equipping students with valuable digital literacy skills that extend beyond the classroom. The real world relevance of digital literacy skills is paramount in today's digitalized world, from accessing vital information to communicating effectively in various aspects of daily life. Digital literacy forms the foundation for successful integration in our technology-driven world. As such, incorporating digital literacy and hybrid learning goes beyond keeping up with technological advances, but empowering them with the essential tools they need to succeed, engage, and thrive in their di new digital-centric environment. So, in light of these reasons, it is important to consider adopting hybrid delivery to, pro to provide equitable, high-quality education for all learners, regardless of their circumstances or backgrounds. We'll now move on to discuss the... Um, often avoiding the constraints of a rigid curriculum. It emphasizes that education should consider and nurture various aspects of a person's well-being, including their emotions, social interactions, and psychological growth, in addition to cognitive development, all for a more comprehensive and meaningful learning experience. This theory views learners as active participants in their education, valuing their individuality and personal growth. It encourages educators to create a supportive and non-judgmental environment that nurtures self-discovery, creativity, and self-expression. This approach promotes intrinsic motivation as students engage with topics and tasks that resonate with their interests and needs. This is a valuable perspective to consider when tailoring instructional strategies, environments to cater to diverse student needs and aspirations. In the context of hybrid literacy, this theory applies by placing a strong emphasis on recognizing and catering to individual needs. It calls for a highly personalized instruction that takes into account of each learner's unique background abilities and challenges. Teachers would also create a safe and supportive learning environment to help students build essential literacy skills while addressing their emotional and psychological well-being. Um, can anyone think of reasons why a student may not be able to attend class in person? Um, anyone can share your answers in the chat. Here are some of the reasons we have identified. Um, personal or family health needs, accessibility issues. Um, I saw someone mention this in the chat. Um, this would be for someone that may not have convenient public transportation available where they live. Again, mental health concerns. Employment obligations, such as a sudden work shift change. Cultural or religious observances. And family responsibilities, such as child care or household needs. To accommodate students' equity-related needs and keeping in mind a humanistic model of education, it is important to meet students where they are and provide flexible classroom delivery options for them. Of course, you would need to assess whether the student is ready for online learning and go over the hybrid readiness elements with each student as you consider offering hybrid delivery option. We have these resources for both of these in our toolkit and you can find them starting on page 32. Once you know the student is a good candidate for online learning, 
Our toolkit has a resource called the Personal Hybrid Learning Plan, which my colleague introduced in our first webinar session. To recap, this plan is intended to support the teacher and their student in understanding the terms and expectations of attending some classes online. This plan fosters equity by recognizing and addressing the student's specific needs and challenges, considering their individual strengths and areas requiring additional support. This approach promotes inclusivity and enhances the chances of success in the online learning environment. We have two different versions of the plan, one for those who need to go remote for a fixed period of time so, such as someone who has mobile issues due to an injury and one for those in situations where students may need to go remote on pre-planned days, such as a parent who needs to stay home every Friday to care for their children. To recap again from the first session, we have further designed two distinct plans, one for teachers and another for students at higher literacy levels which should be completed with the guidance from their teacher. The templates shown here are for the fixed term remote plan. The student centered plan empowers students to assume reasonable ownership and accountability for their learning journey, fostering a sense of autonomy and active participation in their educational experience. By providing these tailored plans, we aim to create a supportive and inclusive learning environment that accommodates diverse needs and promotes self-directed learning among our students. Uh, so let's go through an example to fill out this plan. In this scenario, let's imagine you are a literacy teacher midway through the semester, and you're specifically working with a student named Kasim. Due to his recent family situation with his wife giving birth, Kasim requires remote learning support. As he'll need to assist her at home for the remainder of the semester. You've already gone through the hybrid readiness checklist and discussed the expectations for remote class attendance. Um, however, since Kasim does have limited experience with online classes, and only has his mobile device to access the class, he will benefit from some guidance on accessing Zoom on his phone, managing his camera settings, and muting and unmuting his microphone effectively. To facilitate Kasim's transition to remote learning, you've walked him through the student-centered plan, allowing him to write down when he will be online. During this process, as you reviewed the hybrid readiness checklist and remote attendance expectations, Kasim marked off the corresponding boxes to ensure his understanding of what is expected. You may need to frequently check in with Kasim to ensure his understanding of the expectations and ability to connect to and stay on Zoom. For learners with limited online experience, the plan addresses digital literacy challenges by guiding them on essential skills like accessing Zoom and manage, managing the communication tools, as well as how to use the mobile device for online learning purposes. This support is critical in bridging the digital divide and ensuring equitable access to online learning. Referring to students to external support services is essential for equitable hybrid delivery as it ensures that each learner's unique needs are met regardless of their individual challenges. These services here offer specialized expertise and resources that may not readily be available within your own organization. By making these referrals, teachers empower students to access the necessary support fostering a more inclusive and supporting learning environment that enhances overall well-being and learning success. And I'm sure some of you have already referred to your students to some of these services before. In addition to embracing hybrid delivery as an equity practice for literacy learners, it is imperative for teachers to act as advocates 
for their students. When encountered with barriers that do require attention, it is essential to engage in the dialogue with the program's administration to explore potential solutions and improvements. Education, educators should also consider working with researchers like myself and my colleagues to pursue research opportunities aimed at diving deeper into the challenges and needs of their students to, pr to provide improved or innovative practical solutions. By, active, by actively advocating for positive change and contributing to the body of knowledge in the field, teachers can play a pivotal role in advancing equitable educational practices for adult newcomer literacy and learners. And speaking of advocacy, some of the things that you might be advocating for, and we certainly advocate for after having done this research include several key considerations to enhance the feasibility of hybrid, such as improving the organization's digital infrastructure, acquire funding to provide hardware devices and technical support for students, and establishing attendance and online, online participation expectations. Our recommendations, while applicable across various populations and other hybrid or remote programs, hold particular significance for newcomer literacy learners. These individuals often find themselves in more vulnerable positions with their unique needs frequently overlooked. One important consideration that deserves special emphasis when transitioning literacy learners into online environments is the necessity of providing them with comprehensive onboarding support for acquiring essential digital, digital literacy skills. We continue to emphasize this, that equipping these learners with the fundamental skills to navigate digital spaces not only fosters their learning progress, but also empowers them to participate fully in our increasingly digital world we live in. This fundamental digital literacy support is a critical step in ensuring their success in hybrid or remote learning programs. This that concludes our final session and thank you everyone for listening. Um, if you haven't already accessed our toolkit yet, or would like to share it with your network, please take a moment to scan our QR code, or again, you can access it on our website at this link. And once again, it will be located at the bottom of our webpage. And does anyone have any questions or would like to discuss something further? I will pass it over to Marianne.